Hi, my name is Caroline Poland, and I'm the founder and CEO of Poland and Associates Consulting. Today, I'm going to continue on with my trauma in the nervous system and the body series, and I'm going to talk about the corpus callosum. So just as a reminder, before we get started, we have the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic is where fight or flight exists, and parasympathetic slows us down. We have the prefrontal cortex, this part of our brain that's the wise, um, effortful thinking part of our brain, and the amygdala, which is where we go in fight or flight, and that's quick, and sends off that surge of stress hormones that we need if we're actually in a threat. Today, in talking about the corpus callosum, we're going to talk more about the right and the left hemisphere of our brain. So to get started, the corpus callosum is a wide nerve tract that connects the right and the left hemispheres. And the primary function of the corpus callosum is that it integrates motor, sensory, and cognitive performances between these two hemispheres. So basically the corpus callosum is what helps the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere to communicate. Now, just like the prefrontal cortex can be underdeveloped in people who have experienced trauma and repeated traumas, the corpus callosum can also be underdeveloped in people who've experienced a series of traumatic events. In fact, we know through brain scans that this part of the brain is actually underdeveloped in children who have experienced repeated traumas. Now, the reason that understanding this is important if we are engaging in a trauma-informed and brain-informed life, and especially for those of you who are educators or parents, this is pretty critical, is it impacts our ability to function in the world. So here's what I mean. So when you're talking to a child or a person with an underdeveloped corpus callosum, it actually takes them longer to process information. There's a lag time between hearing something and knowing what to do with it. And the reason for that is that they hear information, but it takes longer for them to process the words that are said and get that information to the right side of their brain so they know what to do. In essence, there's a lag time between hearing information and knowing what to do with it. If we're living in fight or flight in that amygdala, in that sympathetic nervous system, it's very hard to plan, organize, play, basic things that we need as children. And those things are disrupted. And additionally, when we are living out of our amygdala and sympathetic nervous system dominance, communication between the right and the left hemisphere is disrupted and not fully developed. So parents and educators, what does this mean for you? You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Poland and Associates and continue to check back here for more information and videos during this time.